have to step on the sidewalk in the rain and the mud so that somebody else that's that's white can be able to walk on the sidewalk, but because I'm colored, I got to walk in the mud. Things have got to change. It is 1955. Why is it so bad? I, pay, I work. I'm a good seamstress. I go to work every day. People tell me how good I am. But I'm just getting tired. I'm tired of saying no. I'm tired of not getting equal pay. I'm tired that we got to live in a certain part of town. I'm just tired. I just think things got to be changed. And I'm so happy that I'm a part of the NAACP because I got my voter's registration card and I'm going to vote. I'm going to be a part of change. I'm going to speak up because I deserve it. Things have got to change. Now I'm at work. Ooh, and I'm 42 years old. I lived, you know, a good life. Me and my husband, Ray, we good people. You know, he got a decent job working in the barbershop and got good business. I got good clients. They come to the store and I make their clothes. Everything is going good. But I'm just tired of people saying we color. We're not color. We're human beings. We're individuals. Why should you separate and have signs on the bathrooms and on the water fountains and on the school buses and the buses? Whew. I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired. But I now, you know what? I don't work hard all day. I'm doing good. I read my paper. I had good clients. You know, and I'm thinking about all what's going up north. And they talking about Africa and how the people came. And they've got all this stuff going on with African clubs. And I, I hear about it. And I'm, I'm like, that's great. But what about here in Alabama? Why can't we enjoy it too? Why can't we enjoy the fabric and the styles and the music? Why can't we just do that anywhere we choose? But Ray, whew, um, it's getting to me. But on this day, at the age of 42, I ain't never gave the law no problem. I go to work. I pay my fares. I mind my business. I shut up. I talk about this to my husband. But I don't talk outside because I don't want to get in trouble. And I don't want nobody to mess with my husband's business. But this day, I'm just feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. So I need to catch that bus. Where that bus at? You know, and back then in 1955, you have the bus driver and the fare was just only 10 cents. So now, when as a black person getting on the bus, you had to go in and pay the bus driver, your 10 cents. Then you had to get off the bus, go back around, and then get on the bus, and then walk to the back of the bus. You pay, get off, go to the middle of the bus, and then get back on. All right, where the bus driver at? You know, you know I'm tired. You know, I don't work all day. I need to get on this bus. Where you at? Come on, bus driver. Come on. get off the bus. I'm just going to walk on back and I'm just having a seat. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. I'm supposed to ask you not to sit there, ma'am. What? I'm supposed to ask you to sit in the back of the bus. Listen, I done worked all day. I done paid you my little 10 cents. I paid my fare. And I want to sit right here. I just want to sit here and relax myself until it's time for me to get off my stop. I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> but I think I'm supposed to ask you to move. Well, you know what? I'm not going to move. So I guess you're going to have to just call somebody because this day, as Miss Rosa Pop, I... <laughs> no service here. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. You just going to have to call the police or something. 
guess, uh, what, one out of 12? See the man on the corner? His precinct. Oh, jeez, here we go. Needing backup, sir. Ma'am. Oh, Lord, Jesus. Ma'am. Yes, sir. You have to give up your seat. But I, I paid my 10 cents. I worked all day like everybody else on the bus. I'm sorry. The rules are the rules. You have to give up your seat. And if you don't, I'm going to have to arrest you. Well, you know what? It's time for a change. And today, I just mean you're just going to have to arrest me. Mm -mm -mm. I'll come along as long as you don't, like, throw me down and stuff. Make some calls. So on December 1st, 1955, Rosa Park was arrested because she did not give up her seat. Not because her feet was tired, not because she was worn out from a long day of work. She just was tired of being treated unfairly as an African American woman. She was tired of being able to pay in the same fear as everyone else and then demanded that she had to get up, give up her rights as a woman, as a person. That's what she was tired of. It wasn't because of her feet. It wasn't because she worked all day. She was emotionally tired and strained, and she deserved and she wanted to fight for freedom and equality for everyone, not just for herself. And after making that phone call to her husband, the NAACP, they all got together with the community and they began to rally to say from now on, on that day, December 5th, when Rosa Park goes back to court, that that day, depending on what the judge says, that either we're going to either ride the bus or not ride the bus. But in fact, we're not going to ride the bus. So on December 5th, 1955, all, no one rode the bus. 10,000 or more individuals boycotted, and not one black person was on the bus. So we encourage you, do not refer to African Americans as color. That is an insult. That is the Jim Crow term. So when you're saying that, you're degrading. You're going back to the old statement of not respecting African Americans or who they are. Jim Crow law separated us from other individuals. But what we're encouraging today, based on that boycott for buses, and that last, that whole boycott lasts for 18 months. People did not ride the bus for that length of time. And because they all rallied together for one cause that wind up having an impact on so many other causes that we are now together as one. Anybody can ride the bus and sit anywhere they choose. Any person, African American, Jews, Hispanic, you can live and buy your property in any location. You can choose to go to a store in any town and walk into the store with your money and pay. Why? Because of this one incident that occurred way back in 1955 when one person and a rally of bodies got together and said, no more, no more. Why a change ha must come. And today, we are celebrating the civil rights movement because we realize a change has to come. And we must speak up. And we must recognize when we are being mistreated unfairly. And when we do that and we stick together, then there is power, there is unity, and there is love, and there is justice for all. A change is going to come.